What's up everyone? Welcome to the last video of 2023. Today we're gonna ask the question, which insurances do you really need in Germany? It's a video from the YouTube channel Simple Germany, which probably many of you guys know. The video and their channel is linked in the description. Let's see which insurances we really need. A household in Germany spends around 125 euros per month on private insurances. However, okay, how much is that? So the average German gross salary is or was in 2021 4,100 euro per month gross and 4,100 euro gross is let's just say a single person would be 2,656 euros net. If the average person spends 125 euros on insurances per month, that is 4.7% of their salary. Let's see how that compares worldwide. American households spend on average 5.3% of the income on the various insurances. A little below we have 11.2% apparently in Mississippi, but that may be including health insurance. Here we have 6.9, 5.8, 4.5. So I think with our 4. Point, what was it? 4.71 we're right in line with what the US guy spent. Not all insurances make sense and it highly depends on your life circumstances. That's we correct. have created this video to distinguish between the nice to have insurances versus the must have insurances in Germany. Hey, my name is Jen and I'm from Guatemala. And mine is Yvonne and I'm German. And together <coughs> we're from simplegermany.com where we create English content to empower internationals to settle into life in Germany more smoothly. smoothly. We have to start. So in case that you didn't know about Simple Germany yet, Check them out. Link is in the description. Start with a very big disclaimer because as always we are not licensed insurance consultants. This video is based on our own experience, research and personal opinion. So let's start. Good that they mention it. So then let's see what kind of insurances they have. And then I'll rank them too. Let's see what their ranking is. And then I'll rank myself accordingly to what a licensed insurance professional thinks. Start with the top five must-have insurances in Germany. Number one is health insurance or Krankenversicherung. Okay, so we have five must-have insurances and their first one is health insurance. It's mandatory to be frank and you actually need it already to come to Germany. You need it if you need a visa, you need it for your visa. If you don't need a visa, make sure you get it because it's illegal to not have one. So there right. are three options of health insurance in Germany. Number one is public health insurance. Number two is private health insurance. And there is a third option that's called expat or incoming health insurance, which is kind of like an uh, in-between solution if you don't qualify for either one yet and you should only get it for your visa and maybe for the first year until you decide for public or private. Answering that's certainly true. And at some point, if you start a job, for example, various travel expat health insurances, depending on what they mean, there's also uh, private expat insurances, but these travel expat insurance, they're not a real German health insurance. So latest when you start working, they're not going to be accepted. Then you either need to join the public or the private system. And the question, which health insurance is best for you, your circumstance and your family, if you're moving with them to Germany, it's a very complicated topic because True. hashtag bureaucracy in Germany, um, it's not so easy. However, there's uh, not just <coughs> bureaucracy, uh, it's actually fairly easy compared to other uh, things here in Germany. So uh, public to public or private to private is usually fairly easy. Switching from public to private or from private to public sometimes is not so easy or sometimes even impossible. Not for everyone, as you guys uh, keep mentioning in the comments, but sometimes it's, or most of the times it's not easy, not that, not that easy. Uh, and sometimes in various cases, in rare cases, it can even be impossible. Uh, so bureaucracy is not the issue. It's mostly a question of, especially in private, what is actually the right insurance plan that you want to have. Because the switch is only worth it if you get either a better price or a better coverage or the sweet spot would be both at the same time. 
If you already know which health insurance suits you and your lifestyle best, uh, from our readers at simplejumping.com, the favorite public insurance is because they also offer the services in English. And for private health insurance, it's actually is a new digital and also all in English private health insurance. Okay, they were just recommending a public health insurance, which is the big blue health insurance that we made a couple of videos already about and the private health insurance where I absolutely have to disagree. So we're just going to blur this out because we believe that insurance is highly personal. So I don't agree to the statement that there's one insurance company or one insurance system, public or private, uh, that is the best for everyone. Perfinex was built on the motto of it depends, right? You guys uh, know that. Uh, so there cannot be one insurance uh, that is simply the best for everyone. That just uh, doesn't work. There can only be an insurance that is the best for you. And in case that you want to know which insurance is the best for your personal situation, we're happy to help. It's fine uh, that they recommend this private health insurance based on whatever uh, they didn't really tell, but that's fine. But I have to agree, uh, I have to disagree in that uh, case. And this is a private health insurance that keeps reaching out to us over and over again, asking if we want to cooperate and we always decline. So again, there's no single best insurance for everyone. Always check what is the best in your individual situation. Number two is actually my favorite insurance in Germany just because of my relationship to it, and that is the Privat Haftlich Versicherung. Did I say okay. that right? You said it very good. Which is private liability insurance. All right, let's put that into the list. Liability. Okay, I agree, that's a must have. I was in Germany for the couple of years without this insurance, and I must say it was not well received by some Germans. <laughs> <laughs> this is not a mandatory insurance, meaning that there is no law that you have to have this insurance. However, it is very highly recommended. True. 83% of all of Germans have this insurance. And that is because in Germany, you are 100% liable for any damages you cause to third parties. You can get liability insurance for... That's a question that we get a lot is what is liability insurance, especially when it comes to household uh, insurance, which they here, home content insurance. So fairly easy. A private liability insurance pays for all 30 third party damages. If someone of you gets damaged, private liability doesn't care. At least generally speaking, there's some that even pay for your stuff, but let's just take the, um, the, the rule and not the exception. Private liability only pays for third party damages. Why is that important? Because you're liable for all third party da damages that you do, that your child does, that your dog does, your company does, whatever. And that can amount to a lot of money. Let's just say that you uh, wash your clothes in the washing machine and then you go grocery shopping uh, while doing this and the washing machine leaks uh, through all the floors below you and the, the property is, uh, is damaged. You would have to pay for that and that can be tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of euros. Number three yes. of a must-have insurance is car insurance. If you own a car, of that's course. to be <laughs> All right, let's add it to the list. Car insurance. If you own a car, at least the liability part of the car insurance is absolutely mandatory by law. Correct. Usually, a car insurance in German, Kfz-Versicherung, uh, consists of two parts. The liability part and... And that one is mandatory, she's correct about this. So you can't even register a car without having car liability insurance usually. I know there's some ways around it, but generally speaking, you can't register a car without having the car liability insurance. And the damage insurance. Damage insurance is up to your own choice. Liability is a must. How much money you pay for your car insurance really highly depend on so many individual factors that we will not touch in this video. But on average, to have a full uh, car insurance with liability and damages, you can estimate around 600 euros a year. But again, what does it depend on? Because uh, she mentioned it uh, briefly, mainly two things. Uh, what's the car that you have? 
of course, uh, Porsche or Ferrari uh, cost a lot more in car insurance than a Fiat, right? And the other thing is your Schadenfreiheitsklasse. So generally in Germany, when I got my driving license with 18, uh, I had uh, Schadenfreiheitsklasse zero because the risk is relatively high. And then when you get older and you have actually good driving behavior, no damages and all of it, then you start going up or, or down, however you want to see it, in these classes, right? So then you get class one, class two, and then I think it goes up to class 20 or cl uh, class 25 or something. And the better your damage-free class is, the less you're going to pay for the car insurance, right? Because you've shown actually good driving behavior. So a smaller car that is going to cost less in case there's some uh, damage or accident or something and the good driving behavior will cost low. And if you drive a Ferrari and you have bad driving behavior or you're young and you ha don't, don't, don't have a, a history of, of driving behavior, then it's going to be pretty expensive. It is a very kind of like estimation because Ballpark. it highly, highly depends. To have the best market overview and enter all your individual uh, characteristics that fall into this insurance, you can actually follow the over-the-shoulder guide that I recorded from <coughs> the website Tarifcheck, which is a comparison site that um, guides you through finding the best car insurance for you. Aha, uh -huh, now we're going into the right direction. I like it. So comparing different insurances and finding the one that's best for you is a lot better than naming any single provider that is supposed to be the best for everyone. I like it. Number four is dog insurance, or in German, HHH, which means Hundehalter Haftpflichtversicherung. Yeah, no way I was going to remember that for this. Say that three times at midnight and a German insurance broker is going to appear in the mirror. Dog insurance. Video. So six out of the 16 states in Germany <laughs> actually have this insurance as a mandatory insurance you need to have if you own a furry friend. However, even if you don't live in those states where it's mandatory, it's highly recommended <coughs> to have this liability insurance in case your dog causes damages again to third parties. Same principle as with your private liability insurance. I would argue you can control the behavior of your dog even less than your own. So the same principle applies. Yes. That's true. You are liable for all the damages that you do. Uh, and your dog is too. You are liable, of course, for the damages that your dog does. Um, dog, um, horse, anything that is basically bigger than a dog, you need a separate insurance for it. So there's also horse liability insurance. Most of the stuff that is smaller than a dog, so cat, hamster, rabbit mice, uh, whatever uh, you have as pet bird, uh, usually, maybe there's exceptions, but usually they don't need a separate liability insurance. Everything that is a dog or bigger does need liability insurance. And they include all breeds, so there's no exclusion of maybe more dangerous or complicated breeds. Since we're talking about... Again, and based on this, based on the breed that you have, you probably want to select the right insurance for that. Dogs, additionally to liability, you may also opt to get health insurance for your puppy. That is absolutely voluntary, not a must-have. We just want to mention it. Do you need health insurance for your dog, yes or no? I think it's the same question as for all the other insurances. That's why I'm excited to see what's going to come. I think that's the same question for all, as for all the other insurances. What happens if a damage occurs? Can you pay for it? So in that case, what happens if your dog gets injured and needs a surgery, for example? Can you pay for it out of your own pocket? And does it hurt you? If you can pay for that very easily out of your own pocket and you don't even notice, let's say, then maybe you don't need a dog insurance. On the other hand, if you cannot pay for your dog surgery if something happens or it really hurts and you have to give up all your savings, then you probably want to get a dog insurance because if he needs a surgery and you can't pay for it, you probably have to take him down, which would be a huge pity. So you better get dog insurance in that case. Or even surgery <coughs> insurance for your puppy is a bit more pricey as it starts from around 30 euros per no, month. Number five is Ausland Reiseversicherung or travel insurance. This okay. one is... That's a must have. All right then. 
voluntary, but you should highly consider it if you have public health insurance in Germany. Hmm. Reason being is because public health insurance, it actually does cover within the EU, however, only up to the governmental standard in the country that you're in, which often is lower than the cover in Germany. Hmm. So in that case, or especially if you travel beyond the EU, um, that is something you should yeah, should consider getting because often, especially in certain countries, medical costs can explode easily. Very true. If you have private health insurance, then most likely your policy will cover you worldwide. You should double check, obviously. So there is no need to. And you should check for how long, because there are some insurances, private health insurance that only cover for one month. There's others for three months, six months, 12 months. So check for how long also consider this one if that is your case. If you're looking into this one, a yearly price is often way more economic than paying for each trip that you're planning to do. And you can easily get a travel health insurance for a year starting from around 20 euros. So it really doesn't break the bank. We and there's usually package deals uh, for it. So for there's usually travel health insurance, there's travel cancellation insurance, there's travel luggage insurance, there's like a couple of different packages that you can choose, but 20 euros a year sounds realistic. Next to travel health insurance, they of course also offer other travel insurances such as repatriation or accident or luggage insurance. That is totally up for your discretion. The very important part is the health part. Now let's jump into the nice to have insurances. We will list seven of them. When talking about the different insurances that are nice. Quite a lot of insurances then, eh? 12 different insurances. To have, you should always have behind on the back of your head the following question. If I would be in that situation that we will describe in each and every single one of the insurances, will I be able to afford from my own pocket paying for that thing or will I not? If you right. will not, then most likely you should consider getting these insurances. Right. If you're okay financially and you can afford the things that we will mention, then you're totally fine. You don't need to even worry about it. <laughs> At least that's the way that we think of insurances. Yes. <laughs> Very so good let's start way. with the first one, which Very is good the way home of thinking. contents insurance or Hausratsversicherung. Home. Okay, let's add that to the list. Home content. And then this is basically a must have. And this is a nice to have. All right, let's see. Home contents insurance covers your personal belongings against destruction by nature or theft. For example, fire, storm, hail, but also a broken water pipe that, you know, floods your apartment. 76% of Germany. And keep in mind, if you are renting a flat, the water pipe belongs to the property. So because she mentioned it covers the broken water pipe, the broken water pipe belongs to the property. That's not a home content. So pipe in itself is either insured by your landlord by his home insurance not home content but home insurance or house insurance or if you damaged it it will be covered by your liability insurance because you don't own the water pipe the stuff that is damaged by the water leaking from the water pipe that's yours that will be covered by the home content so that's the differentiation between all the different insurances Germans actually have home contents insurance. The way we look at this insurance is that if you imagine your house and you flip it and then you shake it and everything that comes out of it, are you able to pay for all of it with your own pocket? If you are, then you're fine. If you're not, then you might consider getting this insurance. It starts fairly. That's a good way to look at it. Yeah. Turn your house around, shake it and everything that's on the ceiling now or on the, on the floor in that case, um, that's home content. Everything that is like attached to the house that is not home content. As do we have home content insurance and I personally have peace of mind having it, especially because a few years ago our neighbors got broken into, us luckily not, but in that Oops. case, you know, at <laughs> least that was covered. Number two on our list of nice to have insurances is bicycle theft insurance. Okay, I would add that to the home content, but um, whatever, bike theft. Because bike theft in Germany is actually quite a thing, unfortunately. Yeah, that's true. It can also be part of your home can contents insurance, which we yeah. discussed before. So if you opt for that, maybe you can include your bike as we have it. It's been a lifesaver for me because my bike actually got stolen. Oops. And the way that we see it, it makes... Oh, wow, they live in... Where, where do they live? In Berlin or what? This uh, seems to be a dangerous neighborhood. Huh? Got uh, broken into or neighbors got broken into. 
uh, bike got stolen. <coughs> Seems like a dangerous neighborhood to me. Number three is legal insurance or Rechtsschutzversicherung. Again, this is a voluntary okay. insurance, and this is insurance that cover any fees related to lawyers or court fees. It does not include any fines, of course, or any penalties that you actually need to pay from your own pocket. 46% of Germans... Kind of. So, Rechtsschutzversicherung is not kind of legal insurance. We always call it that way, but there's actually one word missing because there will be Rechtsversicherung, legal insurance, Recht is uh, legal. It's actually legal protection insurance, right? So sometimes people think that you can get a legal protection insurance and then one day after you sign the policy, you go out and sue everyone that you meet. That's just not how it works. Uh, this is a legal protection in insurance in case somebody tries to sue you. You cannot fight anyone that you see uh, and try to threaten them with lawyers. That's No insurance is going to pay for that actually have this insurance, us included. Personally, I think this insurance is a very nice to have, have because it as expats, we don't tend to understand how everything in Germany works. And because of maybe some misunderstanding, we might get into trouble. And then Germans are very direct and will tell them immediately. So it's kind of like, a, for me, it feels like, okay, if I do something wrong, I know I have that protection and I, I don't do things intentionally to cause trouble. But you know, protection. it's better to be on the safe side sometimes. You can I have agree. four areas to choose from that you want to insure for legal protection. For more information, you can check out our in-depth guide that we link below. Number four is dental insurance or in German Zahnzusatzversicherung. And the actual important word here is Zusatz because this is an additional insurance to your public health insurance. Big disclaimer, this one only makes sense and is only a nice to have if you have public health insurance. Correct. If you have private health insurance, Skip this Thank section you. of the video, you do not need it. Yeah. You can maybe check whether your private health insurance has it included. Why? Is Same with the travel insurance, right, that we had earlier. You don't need a travel uh, insurance, mostly if you have private, and you also don't need this additional dental insurance. Necessary for publicly insured people because in the statutory public health insurance, dentistry is not really covered that well, and only the basics are covered. And it's very expensive if you want to get any kind of job done on your teeth. So if you have the genes that you tend to have bad teeth as you grow older, then this is definitely an insurance to consider. If you have good teeth, then maybe you don't. In my case, for example, in my family, there's a history of bad teeth and I'm kind mm. of like scared of having the same genes. However, so far, my teeth have been very good. I've never had any treatment. Good and every her. time I go for my yearly checkup, I ask my dentist, hey, how does it look? Is everything going all right or should I take out this insurance because there's usually some years waiting time until it fully kicks in. Hmm. Oh, okay, so now the dentist is also an insurance uh, advisor. Interesting. And he always says, no need. So I trust him hmm. on that. Yeah, therefore we don't have this insurance because also I have very nice teeth. That's unfortunately the <clears throat> experience that I have too, that uh, you ask uh, friends or neighbors or colleagues or your dentist, right? And they're like, well, you don't need to do this or you don't need to do that. But in case it hits the fan, who pays the consequences? In that case, the dentist, if she needs this insurance or if it would make sense at some point for her to get this insurance, uh, the dentist still invoices her, right? The dentist doesn't care who pays for it, if it's the insurance or if it's her. So maybe if you already know that based on your family history, you're going to have bad teeth because of your genes, then maybe it's a good idea uh, to get this insurance uh, now for the reason that she uh, mentions it, because you cannot get this insurance now and invoice them 2000 euro tomorrow. Uh, that's not going to work. And the younger you are, the cheaper it usually is. So maybe it's worth looking into it. In case that you are interested in the... Um, in this insurance, uh, we have our calculator with best dental insurance in Germany. And then you can go to the, to the uh, website and then you can see that here there's, for example, uh, insurances that start at seven euros uh, per month. Number five of the nice to have insurances in Germany is accident insurance or Unfallversicherung. Mm -hmm. Now, very important, every employee in Germany has accident insurance for their workplace and the commute to and from work included from their employer. 
However, yeah, if you are prone to accidents, for example. So while you're at work, <coughs> that's true. While you're at work, you have the accident insurance as part of social security, right? You have public pension, unemployment insurance, health insurance, and care insurance. Those are the four that everybody knows about because it's on your pay slip. But there's actually a fifth one that you don't pay for because it's 100% paid for by the employer, the accident insurance. But this one only covers while you're at work or doing work things. That's why they have the private accident insurance because that one would cover while you're at your spare time. But in your private life, because you're doing a specific sport or anything, you could opt for insuring your private life and that specific sport, make sure it's covered, uh, with a private accident insurance. Now, what does it do? It would pretty much pay you a lump sum in case you uh, break your bones, you become actually invalid for a certain percentage to compensate for the pain that is caused or actually for steps you need to take to adapt your, let's say, home or other factors in your life to your new condition. That's kind of true. The accident insurance uh, pays either a lump sum uh, or a monthly amount. Uh, both is possible, uh, but only if Pauke. And Pauke is a made up word which actually gives us a hint or explains us what an accident is according to German insurance law. Because you might consider some things an accident, but insurance law doesn't. So an accident, as considered in the German insurance law, is something that happens suddenly, plötzlich, from the outside, and that's very important, involuntarily something, so something that suddenly comes from the outside involuntarily on your body and does something, right? So on your body and does something, I think is very clear, but then this one or the Außen, I think is very important. So if you go skiing and you break your leg because you fall down, this is not necessarily an accident because there's nothing hitting you from the outside. You getting a burnout or depression or back pain um, and you cannot sit on your desk anymore. There's nothing hitting you from the outside. This is all internal, right? So all of these, you might consider this an accident, but this is not an accident. An accident is a stone hitting you on the head or something. That is an accident. Um, but a lot of other things where you cannot do your job anymore and may become disabled is not an Uh, not an accident, according to German insurance law. Percent of Germans have this insurance, including ourselves. And that's because we love to do things outdoors and we're very adventurous while we travel. We also do a lot of road biking and hiking and skiing. Well, Ivan skis, I tried to ski, so maybe it's even more important that I have it because I wobble a lot and sometimes fall a lot on the skis. <laughs> so it's important for us to have this insurance just to have that peace of mind. But it's definitely... Uh, and in that case, I would have a deeper look into the uh, exact insurance details um, because some people, ha uh, some insurances have an extended pauke. So then in that case, skiing is probably included. But if you just have the, the cheapest accident insurance possible, skiing is probably not included because you just fall down. There's nothing hitting you externally. And saying that the earth hit you because you fell down... This is not going to work. And the gravity of your injuries will define the amount of payout. Of course, there are some terms and conditions to read, but that's just a first introduction. Yes, and the policy starts fairly low. It starts from nine euros a month. Unfortunately, there's no English provider for this kind of insurance. And the one that our readers gravitate towards is the service provided by... It is a German insurance company and it's all in German. However, this one is also all digital. It tends to be quite friendly. The UI is not stuck in the 90s, so that's pretty cool. <laughs> and that's the one that you can also find the link in the description. There's also English speaking insurances and maybe everyone, uh, uh, every, everyone can do what they like best. But I think when it comes to insurance, uh, the coverage is most important uh, and then the price and then what, whatever the, how their UI looks like. I'm not sure if this is a quality criteria uh, for selecting an insurance. 
Number six is disability insurance or in German. Berufsunfähigkeitsversicherung. Uh, I was actually waiting wow, for this short, one. BU. That is a lot better. <laughs> Now, when you ask a German insurance broker, which is the most important insurance to have next to health and liability insurance, they will most likely name this BU insurance. Mm, and, and particularly tell you, the younger you are, the better to get. Hmm. I've also heard true. also that this is one of the toughest insurances to get because the health questionnaire is actually quite extensive, which leaves that only 26% of Germans have it. So this is... I mean, there's health questions for everything, right? There's health and uh, there's questions for private health insurance. Uh, there's questions for term life insurance, which was going to be the, the next one. And there's questions for disability insurance, which is good. Uh, the insurances just want to know what's the risk they will insure. Makes sense for everyone involved, as le at least if you have one of these insurance. If they didn't ask any question and they would just insure everyone, then the premiums would explode. So this this is the <laughs> this is the right thing to do from insurances. Actually, the one insurance that you can't just buy, but you actually really need to apply for it. So this insurance protects the loss of your income you due to maybe some. As you do for any other insurance, you send out an application and then they accept long-term injury or not some mental health issues or anything that prevents you from performing your job as it is so the difference of BU compared to accident insurance is that the BU pretty much pays you a monthly pension uh, if you are unable to perform your job for longer than six months and that is declared by a doctor of course whereas the accident insurance pays you a one-time payment so we have this so you can also <laughs> so you can also get a Uh, uh, a monthly pension from the accident insurance uh, that's also possible the difference between the real difference between the accident insurance and the disability is that here we have pauke right something suddenly from the outside involuntarily uh, hitting your body bu disability insurance doesn't have this it's just a question of can you do 50% of your job anymore for probably six months yes or no If yes, all good. If no, you're disabled. And they don't ask, they do ask why, but they don't care why. It's, it doesn't have to be an accident. It can also be something internal, back pain, depression, burnout, any of these things. This insurance, I personally did not even know this insurance existed until we had an insurance conversation with Ivan and she mentioned it. And mm -hmm. I would have never probably thought about it um, if it weren't for you telling me actually. Yeah, and I, my dad made sure I got it the moment that I started working, or actually while I was still studying. The monthly... Good that they have the discussion. ...policy price for this insurance really highly <coughs> depends on how much you want this payout to be. It can start from 50 euros a month. I think 50, uh, 50 euros is an average amount. I think most of our clients pay a, a, little, a little less uh, for it, maybe 30, 40 euro. Number seven on our list of nice to have insurances is life insurance or in German Risiko Lebensversicherung, okay. which makes sense if you have a family and life. you are the sole financial provider. This insurance protects your family income in case there is a sole provider and they pass away. 17% of Germans have this insurance only. We are not included in those 17% because we're both self-reliant and we don't see a need of needing this insurance. The cost of such a life insurance depends on your age and the sum you would like to have insured. Mm -hmm. And just like before... And the amount of years that you would like to have insured, of course. A life insurance for 10, 15 years is, of course, a lot cheaper uh, than life insurance for, let's say, 50 years. Or 100 years, let's just say I would take a life insurance for 100 years. The probability of me dying over the next 100 years, I know I look very uh, young and fresh, uh, but my life expectancy is probably not 100 years anymore. This is uh, their ranking. Uh, let me adjust this maybe a little bit. So health insurance, yes, that's mandatory, right? Liability insurance, kind of mandatory, huh? So... Let's include that one too. And then she actually said it, right? If you ask an insurance broker, they're going to mention disability is very important. Yes. Why? Because if travel health insurance, if something happens here, it's going to cost you a little bit, but you can probably survive or financially recover uh, from this. If you get disabled, 
and the of official statistic is that every fourth person gets disabled for an average of five years. And keep in mind the average salary is 4,100 euro. Then that is actually 4,100 euro times 12 times 5. That's a damage of a quarter of a million euros. That's a lot more than any of these travel things. So that's why I would put the disability on number three. And then there's a couple of things that I would maybe put in yellow uh, in case that you need it, right? You don't need a car insurance if you don't have a car, like me. You don't need a dog insurance if you don't have a dog, like me. You don't need a term life insurance if there's nobody dependent on you, like me. The only thing that when I bought the first rental property was that the banks demanded that I either get a term life insurance or I, did, I get a disability insurance. And of course I had to get it, but I got I had a disability insurance already, so we were good. So the travel insurance, I would actually put this into the nice to have as the home content. Uh, bike theft, I would just include this in, uh, in the home content that usually makes the most sense. Uh, then I think uh, legal, I will put this uh, probably at number four. Uh, dental at number five. Accident, I'm not a fan of the accident insurance. I like the, if you can get a disability, uh, it's a lot better. It's a lot more complete. It's a little bit more expensive, yes, but it's a lot more complete because it doesn't rely on this uh, Pauke uh, thing, somebody ex something externally uh, hitting your body. This just makes this insurance <laughs> not good, uh, in my opinion. Uh, so let's give this uh, six or se <laughs> seven, and uh, the same, uh, same for this. And then travel insurance is uh, number eight. So that will be my ranking, a little bit different than their ranking. Now let me know, what do you think about it? How would you rank all of these insurances? Let me know in the comments and make sure to check out the YouTube channel of Simple Germany. Thank you for them for providing the video. And I see you guys in 2024.